Mark here. I'm with uh, John up at Tuscarora Forest in Pennsylvania. And uh, John, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. And we're really interested to see what you have here. This is really pretty My cool. truck. So uh, I'm John, and uh, let's see. This is a 2006 Land Rover LR3 with the uh, V8 and uh, about 180,000 miles on it now. Um, starting at the front of the truck, obviously there's the most noticeable feature. It's my 100 watt solar panel, which uh, trickles down to a dual battery setup and that takes care of my refrigerator, my inverter, um, other accessory lights, things like that. Um, the uh, Proud Rhino bumper, which is a uh, pretty unique bumper. I like its form factor. It's very, uh, it's very flush. There's a lot of the ARBs. They come out quite a bit. This stays pretty nice and tight. Worn winch with uh, synthetic and a Factor 55 closed link system. Uh, pretty genius there. Safety first, obviously, because now you're not using, you don't have the clevis hook with the clamp. It's just a point of failure. It's just a lot of people ask me, why do I have it? Well, because with a closed loop system, you use a soft link or right. a pin and clevis and you just, it's closed. That's right, it. that makes not, a lot of sense. I never even thought about yep. that. So you don't have to worry about failure points on that. Um, my secret for looking eye. Uh, so I have a dual camera system, front and rear. Most vehicles have a front and rear or have a rear camera for backup and stuff like that. But uh, instead what I have is I have a dual camera system that runs through my uh, head unit. And then I have the ability to actually look down. So when I'm forward looking, I can see these two down to the ground. And when you stand, you can actually see your foot almost all the way back there. So because of the well, so when I'm traveling solo on a lot of trips, um, just different obstacles and things like that, I can, instead of having to get out, right. I can look down. Yeah. Or if I get out and I go, oh, that's going to be sketchy, but I can I can still look forward as I'm pulling forward and work my way through so that it it's been a helpful tool to have skid plates part of the bumper system so that does a really nice job of protecting everything up on there it's it's really well armored um land rover does a, a decent job of armoring there's some armoring kits out there of course if you have a land rover that means that it's uh you know a more expensive toy at times to start with it's more expensive to maintain um but really the um their system has been around for so long yeah. and especially like the terrain response and things like that so I can just flip on the fly you know different modes of terrain response and it's it responds very well full-time four-wheel drive so or what yeah, it's, it's full as anything is I guess but um, yeah it's really it's, it's, it's a pretty intuitive system so what made you decide Land Rover when you're deciding for vehicles yeah. and um, how long? Uh, so I've always liked the Defender okay. and the Defender was always kind of a bomb proof system. The Discoveries as they started coming through are, are nice trucks. Um, the one and two, they're very capable vehicles, still still very much in the, the vein of the Defender, which was you know kind of an every man's truck but not necessarily at every man price point. Right. Um, the Defender was, you know, it was designed to be a utilitarian vehicle. And uh, so the, the, a lot of militaries still use it as a, uh, as a vehicle. Um, it's just, you know, fairly bomb proof. Good, uh, good capabilities, a well capable vehicle. The Discovery started the same thing. The LR3 really you start getting into the, uh, the luxury end of it. Range Rover side of things, Rolls Royce side. Right. Um, you get a lot of the creature comforts, the heated seats, the heated steering wheels. Right, you more know, things that yeah, possibly go wrong. That you right, have. exactly. A lot more electronics, things like that, but still a very capable vehicle because it's still built on the same however many sticking years, 70 years of uh, capability. Right. And Now you have another truck that you had prior to this so one. So I did. So I got an LR4, which is actually newer than this. Okay. And um, I've had that for eight years. Okay. My almost two years old. And you said you had started building th that out, and then yep. you came across yep. this. So Performance Rovers uh, down in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, good friends was following down there, watching for a Defender 110 to pop up that I could build up, right? Uh, and do do this to a 110. And uh, the owner of the company said, "I'm selling my truck. Like I I can't I can't build out my truck." yeah for the price that he was selling this for so 
Um, and you've had this now how long? A couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and let's walk around. So, well, before we leave the front, I see you have quite a lot of uh, antennas, and um, I'm sure you'll show us that. Yeah. And then the LEDs, just really quickly, can you just talk about what your setup is here with those? So, CB. Okay. And then uh, GMRS. So this is uh, Alamosa Antennas, a uh, fairly new company. The, if you see a lot of the Ronnie Dahl and the guys from down Australia and other places than America, they've got these big beefy antennas that are on the front. Yeah. So redundancy on communications, plus uh, in reach me so I can do satellite communications text okay. if I need to. Um, I, yeah, that's kind of my- And the top antenna. That's uh, the Wii Boost. Okay. So that uh, if there's a signal to be had for your cell phone, you'll get it with that. All right. Um, you see those on a lot of over the road uh, trucks, and I think they're becoming quite a bit more popular now in the community. Um, is that like a monthly service in order to have the? No, it's, it's just a one time buy, and then all it does is it amplifies the signal on your cell phone. So okay. if there's if there's any chance of a signal, it pulls it in, amplifies it, and as long as your phone's within a approximately 18 inch to three foot five foot range of the the internal antenna you're going to pull a signal keep my maps turning and keep my signal i was out west i did uh i did 6400 miles and of that i probably i'd say 95 percent of the time i had some form of signal. My yeah cheap, my cheap chinese lights cheap chinese lights we were talking about earlier <laughs> they were and you're very pleased with how well they're yeah, even working they for were. you and you yeah. have everything on the top also yeah yeah, I had, I had originally, there was a uh, light bar going across, a uh, rigid light bar. Um, the biggest complaint I had about that is, especially when you're traveling down washboard, is the lights doing like this. And right. it's very distracting to have light going like this in front of your eyes. It's almost like a flickering motion. So that's sort of, I never really cared for light bars very much. Um, and yeah, as I had mentioned, I've seen a lot of people yeah. where they have the light bars and they have to black out their hood and do flat black yeah. in order not to have yeah. the reflections. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, surprisingly, that's like one of the things a lot of people ask me about. They're like, well, doesn't that solar reflect back? No, nope, not at all. It doesn't matter. So let's do a little walk around and I'll kind of follow yep. you. And if you yep. want to talk about, you know, the setup that you have, some of the pros and cons or things that you like, things that you're going to change. You know, you said you had purchased this truck together. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and step out, but still be in the frame as you go ahead and speak. So normally there's, uh, normally on top, I'm carrying a 11 pound tank of propane is on this side, right next to the WeBoost antenna. And then I have, uh, four um three five gallon and one ten gallon uh tanks up on top um a lot of water i think i really kind of discovered this summer that i didn't need that much water but when you're traveling alone and it's going to be long distance you think well better better safe than sorry but it's I a lot of one of my trays for uh for a diesel heater so i can put heat inside the tent um it's an experiment in plan uh, ditch lights, snorkel, uh, obviously lights extraordinaire, place for shovel, place for uh, more lights along the rack system. It's a front runner uh, rack system, yeah, rake I, system. I really, last night this was really great when you were out here cooking. Yeah. It was really beautiful to see you laid up the yeah. side here. Pretty, pretty yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's, I mean, you you know, there's, again, there, you see a lot of different people do a lot of different ways. Honestly, just inexpensive ditch lights that are you can get them at tractor supply for i think 20 bucks i mean they yeah. weren't they weren't expensive at all and i was like you know what those are pretty small those one thing i thought was really pretty neat and i really thought about it but with the, the rooftop you know you have all this great under under space which is really right. really neat and right. the, uh, the tire rack is that correct so it's tailgater and it's uh it's pretty nice because it's uh it just it fits down over your tire and then it just it, kind of holds itself in place and you can put down don't sit on it because right. you know that's what they say it's not a step don't sit on there but yeah just for underneath because it's perfect underneath there fit the chair under there make coffee make breakfast whatever in the morning that's yeah it's really um, pretty neat you still got some coverage obviously i've got the uh, i've got an annex as well for this so it's uh that gives you a full enclosure <laughs> big brave dog. and this tent setup you've been pretty pleased with yeah i mean i do really like it um it's just that as i get older i I am I'm leaning more towards other options. Um, one of the things I've even considered with this is turning it and facing it off the back. I think I could almost get away with opening my rear hatch with it turned. And then when I'm on a narrow trail or something, I don't have to worry about do I have enough room off the one side or the other. As long as I can level the truck, I can flip this out the back. But nobody really does it and there's gotta be a reason and I'm 
I'm doing research on that now, and I'll probably find out there's a reason why nobody does it. That you get it well. So let's so. take a look at, the, at your back setup here with, um, you said you had the fridge, and... Um, so it's a uh, tactical 4x4 uh, rear bumper and tire, uh, tire swing and fuel can carriers. That was, uh, that was like a two-bolt pad. Uh, you strip off the rear bumper okay. of the uh, stock stuff, and um, it's literally, I did this by myself. I put this this steel bumper pushed in place by myself and was like, is that So I see you have, so? you have a cutting board, you know, and uh, <laughs> last night you had the the walkout. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll throw yeah, some of that the video tembo, in. Yeah, the Tembo Tusk, yeah. With the adjustable legs. Kind of varies. I, I like this morning. I was kind of changing things up again, but typically kitchen type things, um, plates, whatever, spices, paper towels, wash bin, um, and then a lot of first aid. It's one of those things where if first aid, fuel, stuff for truck type thing, um, parts for you know tying down the awning on the other side, or when you're doing when you got the annex on there steaks and stuff like that for that I, it's everybody sort of does their drawers a different way and I, I i see a lot of i go through the same thing every time it seems like i, I like decide oh wouldn't this be smarter if i, I did that front runner boxes so that's pretty much all food and then like kitchen type items i focus probably more on food than other people do but i like it and then your your fridge what size is that uh it is a 50 50 quart and, you know so it's the Araby but it's um, this does a nice job of keeping it insulated and then lots of onion and beer and steak and salads and beer and coffee and beer I think there might be some beer in there I'm not sure 100% so I'd say you know with the fridges out you know it's almost like a good mid-size good for yeah. uh, several days yep. and, you yep. know obviously you're going to talk about some of your trips uh, it's good for it's good for uh, solo travel yeah. Uh, maybe two people, um, especially for like shorter trips. Uh, for a long trip, it was fine. Um, I do have a little, uh, little cooler. Gary cooler is Gary it? Cooler is plugs into your cigarette? No. Just a well, there's one that's in the. There's actually one in the center console. Like a little cooler I use with ice because they. I mean, they're like the Yeti coolers. Yeah. They, they last forever. So right. Right. I'll fill drinks and sometimes I'll put drinks in there and just focus food. But really. Uh, on some, on some, most of my trips, I'm usually within not very far of finding fresh food. So I just, I really only plan for like a couple days. Okay. And then I always carry, I have a lot of the dehydrated foods. I usually carry a couple weeks worth of that uh, with me. So if I just plain don't feel like cooking, yeah, you know, it doesn't take much to boil water and eat something and still get something halfway decent. And most of those meals anymore, I mean, I grew up on army food and it was, you know, MREs were terrible, you know. And that was one of the things actually you had yeah. mentioned earlier to me was that that's kind of what got you into this yeah. kind of right you know yeah. the army yeah. kind of yeah i mean i retired from the army and it was uh it was a lot of years of you know spending a lot of time in the woods and spending a lot of time in the field and doing a lot of you know driving our own trucks and yeah i mean that's that's what we did we lived out of our trucks yeah. so yeah. It, this is this isn't a huge leap for me <laughs> this is much more comfortable actually than probably that but it's right. uh so yeah so it was a natural that idea that you can continue to kind of just go see things and you know it's amazing that most of these places like you yeah i've been in here before but every time you come into a place like this even as small as tuscarora is you know by comparison to some of the national forests out say out, out west there's still things to find and just yeah. discover so it i mean it's cool that way well, I think you're right. There's so many things in our own backyard sometimes that we just overlook because we're right. so used to them being there. We take right. them for granted or we just don't see them. Well, you see all the epic trips that people take. Yeah. And you think, oh, I got an epic, epic, <laughs> epic. You no, know, you don't. You just got to go out and yep. do a thing. You know, so that's not that's not a big deal. So, so I kind of jumped fast forward, but that's all right. I had a thought on the food. Do you have a like favorite go to food in your like setup that you're always like, it's always like it's it's there. Steak. Yeah. Eggs. Yeah, mixed vegetables like the, uh, I'll, I, I mean, obviously I know I got I got cutters. I know how to cut food. Right. But uh, yeah, it's easy when you can find like the pre-mixed things like fajita blend or whatever where they're all sliced peppers and onions. 
I mean, it just it just cooks fast. A little bit yeah. of little bit of oil on the on the scottle. You're okay. Here we go. You can quick stir fry those. I mean, you saw last night. Yeah, I mean, I stir fried wow. up some steak and some fresh vegetables. And yeah, I'm, I'm sad you're leaving. <laughs> well, it's none not... of my stoves compared to that. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you, I probably one of the most uh, probably the best idea in a long time. I mean, honestly, it's look how compact that is. It's it's back there. You know, it's not taking up a lot of my space. So in the green bag, I've got the uh, I've got the the new Tembo. T it's a I'm not selling. I don't want to sell like commercial Tembo tents. <laughs> they've got uh, they came up with a cutting board sideboard type thing that fits over light. So I've got that on the bottom. Then I've got the pan itself. Then I you know you got the the grate so you can set something above the heat. You can cook underneath with something, or you can set something above the heat and just keep it warm. Right. And then a cover. I mean, then it all fits in that little green bag, and then you got small green bags for some adjustable legs. Genius. I mean, it really is. When I was growing up, I mean, when I first started learning how to cook, I had three things. I had a microwave, a rice cooker, and a wok, electric wok. And I learned how to cook everything in those three items. I mean, that's, you know, I had this much space. That's what you do. You just, so, yeah. if you see the two uh, fuel cans, let's continue yep. to walk around in your awning yep. set up here. Yep. Awning not set up, but there it is. Uh, and it's really, it's just a straight out, and that's fine. Um, I would like to, I think I'll probably want to do uh, one of the bat wings that so many people do right um but i don't know i this might just transition over to my other truck because my other truck is built very similar to that so it's uh and then you when you arrived last night you had this whole thing stacked up with bundles of firewood which is yeah, really pretty yeah, yeah. amazing so you, you clearly have a lot of room in there and it's, it's well so what i did is i i took out my rear seat so the rear seats are removed and what it allows is a, a bunch of room and then I have underneath. I built a I built a place where I can store all my recovery gear and things like that. So this little panel right here. I've looked at a lot of different things. There's a lot of good ideas about how you fill that void. And I think I even posted something along the way uh, to all my to all my insty friends, uh, trying to figure out what could I do smarter to use this space. Because I what I'd like to do is. One of the things, the weakness of this truck is the power management. It was probably really good for the time, but as you build up, and this is a this is kind of a common problem with most of us, is we we keep adding, 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 but we we exceed or we don't backward plan well to begin with, or forward project what our ideas might be good enough at the beginning, and so. You got wires kind of going everywhere. You got wires connected up all kinds of different ways. So one of the things that I will probably do, I, I think, this uh, this winter is I'm gonna rethink all the power management because I've got you know I've got fuse boxes and bus bars in the back. I've got you know what is it a four gauge that runs all the way to the back, which is great. And so I've got dedicated power back there straight from the from the terminal or from the batteries. But right. Everything on the battery looks clunky, so I want to try to figure out how to better manage that, move it away into a single box, less wires on the different batteries, get all that stuff off the batteries. Because it is dual battery setup, so that's nice. But then when you just kind of... Yeah, so you stuff. have, you know, obviously you have the radio system, you know, back here, I guess a little portable. Can you talk about yeah, some, of your, some of your setups here in the front? Yeah, we got the... BTEC ham radio, which is, uh, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. Um, and then I also have a Midland CB, and then I've got the Baofeng handheld, so it's, um, which is GMRS, they say. Um, it's, it's really just about redundancies. Like, I've been places where I'm traveling by myself, and it's nice to be able to hand somebody a radio. Right. Because you link it, you meet people, you yeah. know, so you say, here's a radio, uh, so we can communicate, and... I had one adventure where, you know, having that was quite convenient because I knew I didn't have to go any further and I should stop and I should just. Yeah, that backwards. was the, uh, the the sliding backwards. Yeah, 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 that was uh, that was a great success. That was a lot right of fun. Now I'm using an iPad Pro. Um, I use that for like mapping and then it's synced with um, um, my InReach Mini. OK, so for EarthMate and that I get it's it just tracks nice. It's so I can use that on the iPad. No problem. And then a redundancy is I have on the uh, it's a Piner Avic. 8500 something um which also has a built-in gps based navigation so the truck has it then i add it and then i add the inreach mini 
Um, and then I have my, of course, you know, phone. And so there's maps, paper and you, maps. And your paper map. Of Beautiful, course, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you got to have paper. Paper's... Unless you decide to, well, if you have to burn it, you yep. still have something to yeah, start a fire, fire with. Which yeah. is key. But yeah, it's uh, it's just a lot of redundancy in uh, communication, a lot of redundancy in navigation. Um, you know, where one system might, that's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Like for some reason, I can't get my Gaia to upload right now properly. So right. I, don't have a, I don't have a clear and fuzzy. Clearly I've been here before because there's tracks running right through here. And this is, place was dropped. You know, I had done a drop pin here. Yeah, you had a couple pins. So it's, right. it's, yeah, it's kind of foolish that it won't upload right. It'll upload right on my phone, but I can flip over to EarthMate. Yep. And I've got, you know, okay, perfect image. There you go. And I can I can look at roads and figure out, I can plot routes and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and it's true. I mean, we have gotten so con so uh, comfortable with technology that, you know, a, a good paper map, you know, you just forget how right. important something like that can be as, as an emergency backup. So these, these maps are actually pretty nice. I mean, this is... This is for Eastern Pennsylvania, but it's, uh, you know, the All Outdoors Atlas and Field Guide. So I've got these for all of Pennsylvania, New York, um, Michigan, because I go up to Michigan quite a bit. Wow. And I mean, it's a big form factor. So you're talking, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, so it's... That's amazing. And it's got everything listed on Flashlights on the door. Um, Flashlights indoor, uh, is, binos. Is this a power outlet here? On the, on the yeah. Okay. So what this is is so I can shore power. Wow. So that goes into uh, um, oh, this is the four amp, six amp uh, Noco uh, battery tender. So that goes to the second battery, and then of course I've got a switch so I can run both batteries simultaneous or turn one off and just have it running pure off solar. Um, so, you know, you've shown us such an incredible vehicle and, you know, you've traveled a lot. Can you just tell us, like, you know, these, last night mm. you were just talking about the, the one dirt road that travels across the U.S.? So, and... yeah, Trans-American Trail, that's, uh, that's a really fun route. And, and what's interesting is that that road right there is on part of the Trans-American Trail. So, and a lot of people don't, you say, oh, Trans-American Trail, and they're like, oh, yeah, that thing that's out west. Nope, it's that thing that starts in... You know, Virginia, North Carolina, where the argument is, I can never quite, there's an island in Virginia, I guess, that you can then cross into North Carolina. So, and it's very confusing <laughs> to me, but it goes all the way out to Oregon. And um, I mean, it's like 5,000 miles, just that piece of it, that one original stretch of it is like 5,000 something miles, predominantly dirt. Wow. So it's like the majority of it's dirt. You bounce on some uh, hardball once in a while, but most of it, you can stay to dirt if you want to. And then there's two legs. There's a leg that goes from Utah down to uh, San Diego and a leg that goes from North Carolina up to New York. So this is actually part of the Atlantic leg. And then of course you got Mid-Atlantic BDR, which is another one that just kind of travels all the way down. So there's a lot of really neat routes that people put a lot of time and effort into to allow you to just kind of follow this route, you know, and, and just kind of, hey, look, it's so neat and it's so cool. Yeah, I mean, it is very cool stuff. So. Right. Um, the neat thing about the Trans-American Trail is that it was set up originally for like uh, the uh, adventure bikes, so dual sport bikes, and you know they have uh, they have much less capability, very capable in different environments, much less capable as far as like range and what you can take with you and stuff like that. And people started doing the Trans-American Trail in vehicles I don't know how many years ago, um, and so I always wanted to do as much of it as I could. And I had a reason to go out to Vegas and drop off my daughter. So I was able to do Vegas to Utah, go up to Moab and, and then meet up with a friend and then do that all the way through to Oklahoma, all the way to the eastern part of Oklahoma. Um, yeah, it's a neat trail. It's a very neat trail system. I ended up doing 29, 2,900 miles on dirt. Wow. Um, from and, that. And you're based out of PA here, right? Yeah. Yep. So in this area or on the East Coast, are there any favorites that you have? Yeah, my backyard. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, Misho is, I literally, five, ten minutes. So it's for me and dog, we're up there every day. Um, Bald Eagle's great. This area is great because you can actually go from, you could start at the Maryland Pennsylvania border and you, you can follow through Misho come around, skip around over uh, 81 and the Turnpike and be in Tuscarora and then follow Tuscarora all the way up through Roth Rock, up to State College, Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle, I mean you could just continue weaving around on dirt for, you know, 
days. Wow. And, you know, the thing is, is that there's, you know, a lot, oh, it's just, for, yeah, they're just forest roads, but you know what? There's nobody out here. Yeah. I mean, here yep. it's opening deer season. You know, yep. There's nobody out here. We're I'm having a good closing. Time. Would you say, you know, there's, like, just give some, like, pros and cons or just talk about, like, this lifestyle of getting out and traveling? You give some feedback? No, it's, uh, it's a good time. I mean, the idea is that, you know, if you have any vehicle with any amount of capability, you can go anywhere and do something. Right. Yeah, there's some technical stuff you're not going to do. And there's technical stuff that, you know, I was out west and I was like, eh, I'm not going to do that. Because, number one, I'm by myself, you know. So it's important to know your capabilities of a vehicle. It's in, it's important to know your limitations as a person, especially if you're traveling alone. But if you travel with a group, heck, man, we, we were up at Bald Eagle a few weeks ago. And there was a guy in a Honda Pilot. I mean, he was going everywhere. Yeah. Yep. You know, he was a little bummed about the pin stripes that he was getting on his vehicle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you can have fun anywhere. Um, and just get yeah, out and do it. Yeah, you just know. go out and do it. Just, I mean, look, this is, how local is this for us? You yeah. Know? You know, we're here within free. a couple hours and it's free. Yep. You know? You just have to call the forestry and... Exactly. And exactly. You can stay here up to seven days. Right. You just have to make sure you register. That's right. Well, listen, I, I can't thank you enough for your time yep. and for walking us around and showing us, you know, your setup and your gear. Well, and, thanks and for asking me. It's been a pleasure.